Jack Turner navigated through the crowded Mars Central spaceport with practiced ease. The air buzzed with the sounds of ships docking and departing, traders bartering, and a cacophony of languages both human and alien. His eyes were sharp and his mind was focused. Today, like any other day, was about profit. Jack, a voice called out. He turned to see Milo, an old friend and occasional business partner, jogging toward him through the crowd. Milo's breaths were short, his face flushed with urgency. Slow down, Milo. What's got you sprinting through a spaceport like a comet tail? Jack asked, a smirk playing on his lips. You need to see this, Milo panted, holding up a small metallic object cradled in his palm. I picked it up from a Kerbin trader. He claimed it was just a trinket, but, but you think it's more than that. Jack's interest was piqued as he took the object, examining its intricate carvings and the faint, pulsing light emanating from its core. This isn't just a trinket. Exactly, Milo beamed, pleased to have caught Jack's attention. I figured you'd know what to do with it. Let's find out exactly what we're dealing with, Jack suggested, leading the way to a quieter corner of the spaceport where they often conducted discreet business dealings. As they settled at a small secluded table in a dimly lit bar, Jack pulled out a compact analysis device. He attached the object to the device, which hummed to life, projecting holographic data into the air. Hmm, Jack murmured, scrolling through the data with swift gestures. This isn't just alien tech. It's ancient. Predates current galactic civilizations. See these symbols? They're not just decorative. They're functional, part of its circuitry. Milo leaned in, his eyes widening. You mean it's some kind of key? Or a map, Jack added his mind racing with possibilities, and maps lead to treasure, or power. The bar's doors swung open, letting in a rush of noise from the spaceport. Jack instinctively turned, his gaze locking with a pair of sharp, calculating eyes. The newcomer was Zara, a well-known figure in the underworld and not someone you wanted crossing your path. Jack Turner, holding court in the shadows as usual, Zara called out, her voice smooth as silk but with an unmistakable edge. She approached their table, her eyes fixed on the artifact. That looks valuable. Zara, always a pleasure, Jack said, his tone casual but cautious. He subtly moved the artifact out of plain sight. Just catching up with an old friend. I'm sure, she replied, sliding into a seat uninvited. Word travels fast here, Jack, especially when it concerns potential fortunes. What have you found? Jack and Milo exchanged a look. Just old tech? Jack answered, hoping his nonchalance would deflect her interest. Mostly scrap. Don't play coy, Jack. You and I both know there's no such thing as just old tech in our line of work. Zara pressed, her gaze sharp. Jack sighed, knowing that misleading Zara was futile. It might be something big, but it's nothing until we figure out exactly what it does. And when you do, remember who has the resources to help you reach whatever end this map points to, Zara offered, standing up. Her movements were smooth, a predator confident in her power. Don't keep me out of the loop, Jack. As she left, Milo whistled lowly. She's not someone you want as an enemy, nor as a friend, Jack murmured, pocketing the artifact. We need to figure this out quickly, Milo. If Zara's interested, it won't be long before others are too. Agreed, Milo said. So what's our next move? We need to decrypt this fully, and for that we go to Europa. There's a guy there, an expert in alien artifacts, if anyone can make sense of this, it's him. Jack's decision was made with the same determination that had kept him alive in his perilous line of work. As they left the bar and headed back into the throng of the spaceport, the weight of the potential discovery in his pocket felt like the start of something new, or the beginning of the end. The soft hum of the wanderer's engines filled the cockpit as Jack and Milo prepared for departure. The screens flickered with navigational data, plotting a course toward Jupiter's moon, Europa. Jack's hands moved with confidence over the controls, each flick of a switch precise and assured. You sure about heading to Europa? Milo asked, strapping himself into the co-pilot's seat. It's not exactly friendly territory for artifact hunters. It's our best shot, Jack replied, keeping his eyes on the screen. Besides, it's about who you know, and I know someone who can help us. As the wanderer slipped through Mars's orbit, a warning light flashed on the dashboard, accompanied by a shrill alarm. Incoming vessel, the ship's computer announced in a calm, synthesized voice. Can you identify it? Jack asked, his voice steady despite the rising tension. Scanning, the computer replied. Moments later, it added, Vessel identified. Zeltronian warship, heavily armed. Milo swore under his breath. 
Zeltrons? Here? They must be after the artifact. Jack's jaw tightened. Looks like Zara wasted no time. He grabbed the communicator. This is Jack Turner of the Wanderer. State your intentions. The reply was a harsh, guttural voice, unmistakably Zeltron. Surrender the artifact, human, and we might let you live. Not a chance, Jack muttered. To the communicator, he said more diplomatically, I think you have the wrong ship. We're just simple traders. We know what you carry, the Zeltron captain snarled. Hand it over, or we will take it by force. Jack glanced at Milo, who nodded, understanding the unspoken plan. Prepare for evasive maneuvers, Jack ordered, his fingers dancing across the controls. The Wanderer lurched as Jack executed a series of sharp turns and dives, the Zeltron warship firing energy blasts that sizzled past, close enough to make the hull shudder. Jack kept his focus, weaving through the barrage with the skill of a seasoned pilot. Jack, they're matching every move we make, Milo said, his voice tense as he monitored the radar. I've got an idea, Jack said. He pulled the Wanderer into the shadow of a nearby asteroid. Kill the engines, now. The ship coasted silently, barely a speck against the vast, rocky surface. The Zeltron warship flew past, losing sight of them. We need a more permanent solution, Milo said, eyeing the radar. They'll be back. Jack nodded. Let's make a run for the asteroid belt. We can lose them there. As the Wanderer slipped back into full power, darting toward the dense field of debris, Jack's mind raced. This was no longer just about reaching Europa, it was about survival. The asteroid belt offered a dangerous respite, but it was their best chance. Navigating the belt with deft maneuvers, Jack felt the familiar thrill of challenge. He was in his element, turning potentially deadly situations into opportunities. Behind them, the Zeltron warship hesitated, its bulk less suited for the intricate navigation required here. We're clear for now, Jack finally said, letting out a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. They won't follow us into the belt. Milo relaxed slightly, though his eyes remained wary. That was too close. We need to be more careful. Jack agreed, though the edge in his voice spoke of his undeterred resolve. Let's get to Europa. We have an expert to meet and an artifact to decrypt. As the dangers of the asteroid belt loomed around them, Jack couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning. The artifact in his pocket was more than a prize. It was a beacon drawing danger with every light year crossed. The Wanderer's engines hummed a steady tune as Jack and Milo emerged from the treacherous asteroid belt, setting their course towards Europa. The moon's icy surface gleamed in the distant sunlight, a cold, unwelcoming sight that belied the potential help it could offer. Europa Station coming into range, Milo announced, checking the communication channels. I'm hailing them now. A crackle over the comm was followed by a calm, authoritative voice. Europa Station here, state your purpose. Jack leaned towards the microphone. This is Jack Turner. I'm here to see Dr. Emil Voss. Tell him it's about an old promise concerning rare artifacts. There was a pause. Then the voice returned, slightly warmer. Dr. Voss is expecting you. You're cleared for docking at Bay 6. As the Wanderer docked smoothly, Jack and Milo prepared to disembark. The cold of Europa's station hit them as they stepped out a stark contrast to the warmth of the ship. They were met by a woman with striking silver hair and sharp green eyes. Mr. Turner, I'm Lyra, she introduced herself, extending a gloved hand. Dr. Voss sent me. He's been held up in the lab, but he asked me to assist you in the meantime. Lead the way, Miss Lyra, Jack said, following her through the winding corridors of the station. They arrived at a secure facility, its doors opening to a cluttered workshop filled with alien technology and artifacts. The air was thick with the smell of ozone and metal. Dr. Voss has briefed me about your artifact, Lyra began, her eyes curious. He believes it could be significant. May I? Jack hesitated for a moment before handing over the artifact. Lyra examined it with expert eyes, running her fingers over the inscriptions. Fascinating. The energy it emits is unlike anything we've cataloged. What can you tell us about it? Milo asked, peering over her shoulder. It's certainly ancient, possibly predating known civilizations. It resembles technology from the Atraxian archives, but it's far more sophisticated, Lyra explained. She placed the artifact in a scanning device which whirred softly, projecting intricate holographic images. The inscriptions are a form of command interface, Lyra continued. It seems to be part of a larger mechanism, possibly a map or a key, as you suspected. But where it leads... She trailed off, her fascination evident. 
That's what we need to find out, Jack said, watching the symbols dance in the air. Any idea how to fully activate it? Lyra nodded. I believe so. It requires a specific energy signature to fully engage, something that mimics its original environment. We'll need to construct a simulacrum of the artifact's native energy field. That sounds time-consuming, Jack remarked. It is, and not without risk, Lyra warned. Activating something like this could attract unwanted attention. The Zeltrons are not the only ones interested in such artifacts. We'll have to take that chance, Jack decided firmly. Can you do it? Yes, but it will take some time to gather the necessary components, Lyra replied. Then we start immediately, Jack said, determination clear in his voice. Whatever this leads to, it's important, and I want to be there when it opens. Lyra smiled, a spark of excitement in her eyes. Then let's get to work. As they delved deeper into the mysteries of the artifact, the icy exterior of Europa seemed less hostile. Here, in the dim light of the lab, Jack, Milo, and Lyra formed an unlikely alliance, bound by curiosity and the thrill of discovery. But beyond the station's walls, the universe watched and waited, its countless eyes fixed on the same prize. The Wanderer cruised at full speed towards Nebula 6, a celestial maze of gas clouds and asteroids known for its treacherous navigation and valuable minerals. Jack piloted with a steady hand, his eyes constantly shifting between the navigation console and the viewport. The colorful swirls of the nebula glowed ominously as they approached. We're entering Nebula 6, Jack announced, adjusting the shields to compensate for the increased debris and electromagnetic interference. Keep your eyes peeled, Milo. This place is a haven for pirates. Milo nodded, his hand hovering over the weapon controls. And the perfect place for an ambush. Lyra, now a regular crew member, monitored the energy readings from the artifact, which had become increasingly active as they ventured deeper into the nebula. The artifact's energy signature is aligning with something out here, she said, pointing to a fluctuating graph on her screen. It's as if it's resonating with the nebula itself. Could there be a connection between this place and the artifact's origin? Milo wondered aloud. It's possible, Lyra replied. Ancient civilizations often used such areas for their energy-rich environments. As they discussed the possibilities, an alarm blared. Multiple incoming vessels, the ship's AI announced, its voice calm amid the rising tension. Looks like we've got company, Jack muttered, peering at the radar display. The screen showed several blips converging on their position. Pirates or worse. The first ship emerged from behind a gas cloud, its hull scarred and bristling with weapons. It was soon joined by two more, each marked with the insignias of the Varkans, a reptilian alien race known for their ruthlessness. They're Varkans, Jack said, gritting his teeth. Milo, ready the cannons. Lyra, keep trying to pinpoint the source of that resonance. We might need to make a quick getaway. The Varkan ships moved into an attack formation, their weapons charging up with a threatening hum. Jack maneuvered the Wanderer expertly, dodging blasts of plasma that illuminated the nebula with their fiery glow. Milo fired back, his shots precise, taking out one of the Varkan ship's engines. Got one, he shouted, his voice a mix of relief and adrenaline. But there are more closing in, Lyra warned, her eyes locked on the sensors. Jack, the artifact's readings are spiking. Whatever it's reacting to, it's close. Lead me to it, Jack said, making a split-second decision. He steered the ship deeper into the nebula, following Lyra's directions. The Varkans pursued relentlessly but Jack's knowledge of nebulae and his piloting skills allowed them to weave through the most dangerous areas, where sensor interference could cloak their path. Suddenly, the nebula around them lit up with an ethereal glow. There! Lyra pointed to a small asteroid, emanating the same energy signature as the artifact. Jack navigated the ship closer, the asteroid's surface beginning to reveal ancient technological structures. It's a hidden outpost, he realized. Older than any known civilization. Just as they approached, a massive blast from the Varkans struck their shields, shaking the ship violently. Shields at 20%, the AI reported. Critical damage sustained. We can't take another hit like that, Milo yelled. Doesn't matter, we're not leaving, Jack declared, his eyes fixed on the outpost. Prepare the escape pods, Milo. You and Lyra go. I'll cover your escape. No, Jack, Lyra protested. You can't. It's an order, Jack cut her off, his tone leaving no room for argument. Get to that outpost. Find out what this is all about. I'll handle the Varkans. Reluctantly, Lyra and Milo rushed to the escape pods as Jack prepared to make his last stand, hoping that his sacrifice would not be in vain. The Varkans closed in, 
unaware of the ancient secrets that were just within reach. Lyra and Milo's escape pod hurtled through space, narrowly evading the intense skirmish between Jack and the pursuing Varkins. With a jarring impact, they crash-landed on Zylo, a nearby uninhabited planet known for its harsh terrain and unpredictable weather patterns. As the dust settled and the pod's door hissed open, Milo took a deep breath, tasting the planet's metallic air. Well, we're alive, at least, he remarked, stepping out into the dim light of Zylo's twin suns. Lyra followed, scanning the horizon with a portable device. The outpost must be close. The artifact's signal led us here. Her face was set, determined, her mind clearly on their mission, and on Jack's sacrifice. They salvaged what they could from the pod, supplies, tools, and the vital components of the artifact, and set off across the rugged landscape. The ground was uneven, covered in sharp rocks and fine, silvery sand that shifted with their every step. As they navigated through a narrow gorge, a sudden storm swept over them. Violent winds pelted them with sand, reducing their visibility to nearly zero. We need to find shelter, Milo shouted over the howling wind. Lyra pointed to a dark opening in the side of the gorge. There. They made their way to the cave, shielding their faces from the stinging sand. Inside, the noise of the storm was a dull roar, a stark contrast to the eerie silence of the cave. We'll wait out the storm here, Lyra decided, setting down her gear. She pulled out the artifact, its glow a soft beacon in the gloomy cave. We need to figure out our next steps. Milo nodded, sitting beside her. First we survive, then we find that outpost. There's a reason the artifact led us to this planet. As the hours passed, the storm outside waned. Lyra and Milo used the time to repair some of their equipment and patch up minor injuries. The artifact, placed securely between them, seemed almost to be guiding their efforts, its glow pulsing at regular intervals. Once the storm cleared, they emerged to find the landscape transformed. The winds had uncovered part of an ancient structure, its surfaces marked with symbols similar to those on the artifact. This must be it, Lyra said, her eyes wide with a mix of awe and anticipation. The outpost Jack died to help us reach. They approached cautiously, their scanners detecting faint energy signatures that mirrored those of the artifact. The door to the outpost was partially buried under sand, but between them they managed to clear the debris and access the controls. The door slid open with a hiss, revealing a chamber filled with alien technology, much of it still operational. Incredible, Milo murmured, stepping inside. It's like stepping back in time. They explored the outpost, finding data pads and other devices that, when interfaced with the artifact, began to reveal their secrets. It's a library, Lyra realized, reading the data streaming across her handheld device. A repository of knowledge from a civilization that predates the current galactic empires. As they delved deeper into the outpost's archives, Lyra and Milo uncovered schematics for technology far beyond current understanding, including weaponry and space travel. We have to get this information back, Milo said, his voice earnest. It could change everything. But we also need to be careful, Lyra added. This knowledge in the wrong hands. They agreed to secure as much data as possible before attempting to contact any remaining allies who could help them return to civilized space. Their survival on Zylo had turned into a mission not just to live, but to carry forward a legacy of untold importance. Outside, Zylo's twin suns set, casting long shadows over the landscape. Inside the outpost, Milo and Lyra worked by the light of their equipment, driven by the memory of their friend and the weight of the discovery that awaited the galaxy. After deciphering the vast archive of knowledge within the outpost on Zylo, Lyra and Milo carefully packed the essential data and made their way back to civilization. They managed to secure passage on a trade ship bound for Sarnath Prime, a hub of interstellar commerce and diplomacy. The planet was alive with diverse species, each bartering goods with animated enthusiasm. Milo, with his rugged charm, navigated the stalls and vendors with ease, while Lyra kept a protective eye on their data. We need to find a buyer for some of our salvage to fund the next part of our journey, Milo suggested, glancing at a display of rare minerals. Lyra nodded, distracted by the crowd. Her mind was not on the market, but on the next step. After we secure funds, we need to contact Jack's old ally. He can help us disseminate this information safely. They sold off some of the less sensitive components they had salvaged from the outpost at a good price, thanks to Milo's bargaining skills. With their finances somewhat replenished, they made their way to a quieter part of the market.
where private deals were often made away from prying eyes. Lyra's contact was supposed to meet them at a discreet tavern known for its confidentiality. The contact, Zane, was an old friend of Jack's and reputed for his integrity. As they waited, Lyra's expression grew tense. Milo noticed her anxiety. You okay? You've been off since we left Zylo. Lyra sighed, her eyes not meeting Milo's. It's just... there's a lot at stake. We're carrying something that could change the galaxy. I can't stop thinking about what Jack would have done. He'd probably tell us to be careful and not trust anyone too easily, Milo replied, trying to lighten the mood. The conversation was cut short when Zane arrived. Lyra, Milo, good to see you both safe, he greeted, his tone solemn. I heard about Jack. I'm sorry. Thank you, Zane. We need to discuss how best to handle the data from the outpost, Lyra said, getting straight to the point. As they delved into the details, Lyra suddenly stood, her face hardening. Excuse me, she said abruptly, stepping outside. Milo followed her, concerned. Lyra, what's going on? Outside, Lyra turned to Milo, her expression conflicted. I haven't been entirely honest with you, she admitted. The Sylvans, my people, have been searching for this kind of technology for centuries. It could ensure our survival against our enemies. Milo's eyes widened. What are you saying? I'm saying that I can't let this data get out to anyone else. It needs to go to the Sylvan High Council, Lyra confessed, her voice trembling slightly. Milo felt a stab of betrayal. You can't do that. We agreed to share this with the galaxy for the good of all. Lyra's gaze was resolute. I have to protect my people, Milo. I thought I could walk away, but I can't. I'm sorry. Before Milo could react, Lyra turned and walked away, disappearing into the crowd with the data. Milo stood there, stunned, betrayed by his once trusted companion, now unsure of whom to trust or where to turn next. The weight of their discovery was now a burden of secrecy and deceit, and he knew he had to act quickly to prevent Lyra from making a potentially catastrophic decision. Milo tracked Lyra to a distant, uncharted planet where ancient ruins rose from the harsh landscape like the bones of a forgotten civilization. As he approached, he could see Lyra and a contingent of Sylvans already examining the entrance to a massive structure, clearly built with the same technology as the artifact. Armed only with determination and a hastily acquired blaster, Milo approached, his heart pounding with the betrayal still fresh. He had managed to rally a few of Jack's other allies, warning them of Lyra's intentions and the potential misuse of the technology. Lyra! Milo shouted as he came into the open, his voice echoing against the stone. The Sylvans turned, weapons ready, but Lyra raised a hand to stop them. Milo, you shouldn't have come, Lyra said, her voice strained. This isn't your fight. It became my fight when you decided to betray Jack's memory and our mission, Milo retorted, stepping closer. You think using this technology for your own ends will end your wars? It will start new ones. As they confronted each other, the ground trembled. Without warning, several alien factions arrived, having followed Milo or detected the activation of the ancient site. Varkins, Zeltrons, and others, all drawn by the promise of power that the ruins held. A chaotic skirmish broke out as each faction vied for control. Lyra looked at Milo, a trace of regret in her eyes. We need to work together, Milo. Please. Realizing the greater threat, Milo nodded reluctantly. They joined forces, directing their groups in a defensive strategy. As the battle raged, Milo and Lyra made their way into the heart of the ruins, where a giant console hummed with life, awaiting interaction with the artifact. Lyra inserted the artifact into the console. It fit perfectly, activating the ancient system. The walls of the ruin lit up with holographic displays, revealing star maps, weapon designs, and more. The knowledge of a lost civilization. We can't let this fall into the wrong hands, Milo said, watching as the data streamed across the screens. Nor can we use it to wage war, Lyra added, her conviction now shaken by the unfolding violence outside. Together, they worked quickly to initiate a lockdown sequence. The technology would be sealed here, on this forgotten world, hidden away from those who would misuse it. As the final commands were entered, the structure began to close itself off, the entrance sealing with an irrevocable finality. The fighting ceased as the factions realized the futility of their conflict. With the technology now inaccessible, the alien groups retreated, their hopes of easy power dashed. Milo and Lyra emerged from the ruins, the weight of their decision evident in their weary expressions. I hope we did the right thing, Lyra said, her voice low. We did what we had to, Milo replied. 
Maybe this will give the galaxy a chance to find peace the right way. As they watched the last of the ships disappear into the sky, Milo and Lyra knew their journey was not over. There would be consequences to their actions, relationships to mend, and a galaxy to traverse that was forever changed by the secrets they had helped to protect. Their alliance, born of necessity and tested by betrayal, had held when it mattered most, suggesting a future where perhaps, one day, trust could be rebuilt. Milo returned to Mars, the red planet that once thrummed with the anticipation of cosmic opportunities and perilous adventures. The streets of the Mars Central Spaceport, where his journey with Jack had begun, now echoed with a quieter, more reflective buzz. The recent events had shifted the interstellar dynamics, and there was a palpable sense of cautious optimism in the air. He walked through the familiar marketplaces, where whispers of the sealed ruins and the halted war circulated in hushed tones among traders and travelers. Milo felt the weight of his experiences as he passed the tavern where he and Lyra had last spoken as friends, before the layers of betrayal and necessity had torn that friendship apart. At a small, newly opened shop dealing in exotic goods, Milo spotted a familiar figure behind the counter. Lyra was there, arranging artifacts and oddities with care. He hesitated at the door, unsure of the reception he might receive. Lyra looked up, her expression unreadable at first. Then, slowly, she smiled. A small, tentative gesture, but genuine. Milo, she greeted, her voice carrying a note of weary relief. You came back. I did, Milo replied, stepping inside. It seems we both have a knack for starting anew. Lyra nodded, her eyes glancing around the shop filled with remnants of other worlds. After everything, it felt right to come back here. Mars. It reminds me of better times. And of the lessons learned. Milo walked up to the counter, looking at a small device spinning slowly on a pedestal. Selling relics but keeping secrets? He joked lightly, trying to bridge the gap the past had forged between them. Something like that? Lyra agreed, her smile widening slightly. We both know the galaxy isn't ready for what lies within those ruins. Maybe it never will be. Milo's gaze lingered on a photo tucked away behind the register, a picture of him, Jack, and Lyra, taken right before their final mission together. Jack would have been proud, you know. We saved more than just relics and data. We saved a chance for peace. Lyra's expression softened. He was always the optimist, believing in the good of the galaxy and the potential of its people. He still is, Milo said quietly, touching the frame of the photo. In a way, his hope, it lives on. In us. There was a long pause, a silent acknowledgement of the bond they still shared, tempered and reshaped by the trials they had endured. Maybe one day the galaxy will be ready for what we found, Lyra mused. Until then, we keep it safe. We keep his legacy alive. Milo nodded. And we keep looking forward, not back. As they talked, customers drifted in and out, the little shop becoming a microcosm of the broader universe. Diverse, vibrant, but seeking something tangible to hold on to in a galaxy still full of unknowns. The red sands of Mars blew gently against the shop windows as the sun set, casting a warm, hopeful light over the new beginnings inside. Here, amid relics of the past and the quiet promise of the future, Milo and Lyra found a new chapter unfolding. A chapter not just of survival, but of stewardship and perhaps, eventually, reconciliation.